In this video, we'll be talking about different kinds of vector norms. And what I mean by vector norms is kind of different ways to measure the magnitude of vectors. And now you're probably thinking, well, I already know how to measure the magnitude of a vector. But the way you know it is probably the L2 norm, which is the way that's most commonly taught and used very frequently. But there's also something called the L1 norm, which is not used as frequently, but it's also worth mentioning. Especially because in our regression series, we'll be using both the L2 and L1 norm and stating the merits of both of them. So it's very important to know these things. In fact, in those videos, I'll be re referencing this video. So it's very important that you watch this brief video. So given some vector, let's say it's two-dimensional vector just for now, but uh, after the towards the end of the video, we'll show how to generalize it. We have some vector beta, and that beta has two components, beta naught and beta one. Now, what is the L2 norm of this vector? You probably already know this. This is what you've been using all throughout your schooling, most likely. So the L2 norm, which is the notation for that is double bar. You put the vector double bar, and then you put a subscript 2 for L2 norm. Usually, they don't even put this because it's understood that it's an L2 norm. But because of the video, we're making this distinction. We'll put the 2. This is simply equal to square root of beta naught squared plus beta 1 squared, also known as the Cartesian distance uh, from the origin to these coordinates beta naught, beta 1. So let's just draw that. So let's pretend for a moment that um, we draw our vector just like this, and this is the point beta naught, beta 1. So the distance of this vector, the distance of this segment right here, this ray, is the L2 norm of the vector beta. So let's say that distance is 2, and let's say this angle was 45 degrees, so you know, this each each side length is radical 2, just, just saying, for instance. Now the L1 norm is a little bit different. It's actually, ma it maybe makes more sense, because even if you, if you hadn't learned about this yet, if you didn't know about the L2 norm, and someone just told you about this vector, and they didn't even say anything about it in terms of Cartesian coordinates, they just said, here's uh, two points that are just, you know, being together for some reason. How are you going to measure the, you know, size of these two points together? You might more naturally use the L1 norm, which is given by, the notation looks pretty much similar, except we put a 1 here. So the difference is you double bar, double bar, except here it's a 2, here it's a 1. Here, this is defined by the absolute value of beta naught plus the absolute value of beta 1, which maybe makes more sense because you just have two numbers here, a double of numbers, and maybe you just want to find the, real, the magnitude of these things by just taking the absolute magnitude of the first plus the absolute magnitude of the second. We don't want to deal with any negatives here, which is the same thing this is trying to achieve, really. But now the geometric interpretation has changed because if we have the same vector right here, so this vector, I guess, in component form, it would be rad 2, rad 2, right? What is the L1 norm? So the L1 norm says, rather than do this whole thing right here with the squares and the square root, we're simply going to add the magnitude of radical 2 plus the magnitude of radical 2. In this case, we don't need to do any negatives uh, becoming positive, so it's just rad 2 plus rad 2, or 2 radical 2, which is not the same as 2. It's in fact more than 2. And you can see that because basically geometrically what you're doing with the L1 norm is you're adding the legs of this right triangle right here. Instead of taking the hypotenuse, you're adding leg 1 plus leg 2. And because of how triangles work, remember, when you add two sides, it always exceeds the third. So you're going to exceed the L2 norm here. Okay, so now to kind of round out this video, let's just show an example geometrically what it looks like. Uh, we're going to do two different things. So we're going to do, how does it look in the plane when you have, when we ask for the L2 norm being equal to 2? versus the L1 norm being equal to 2. Oops, that's a 1, being equal to 2. Okay, so the L2 norm equal to 2, you probably already know. All we're saying here is we want the distance from the origin to be equal to 2, which we know is just a circle. So already we've drawn one ray uh, that is you know part of that circle, so we can just complete the circle. If this is 2, uh, if we kind of scan down here, this is 2. This is not going to look very great, but we're just doing it for the sake of an example here. Here's our circle. Beautiful. Okay, here's our circle. So this is what it looks like when we have the L2 norm equal to 2. What does it look like when we have the L1 norm equal to 2? What we're asking for is we're trying to find all the points such that when you take the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate and you add them together, we get 2. So we can kind of just plot a few points and figure out what this is looking like. So uh, this is still the same because this point is what? It's 2 comma 0. And does that behave? Does that uh, Is that abiding to the rules? Yeah. So if beta naught is 2 and this is 0, then we have 2. So this is part of it. Just like that, this is part of it. This is part of it. This is part of it. But the shape is a little bit different. Instead of becoming a circle, it becomes a diamond. So first I'll draw it and then we'll just try to kind of geometrically see why this is true. So what is the middle point on this diamond right here? It's 1, 1, because this is a straight line. The slope, uh, the point 1, 1 is on it just because, you know, how the line is. So 1, 1, does that abide to the things? Yeah, because 1 plus 1 equals 2. Now, see, it doesn't work here because we have 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, but then radical 2 is not equal to 2. And just like that, we can have the negative 
uh, line here, we can have the, basically you can change the slope, you can change the intercept a little bit, and it's still true, because here if we have one comma negative one, what is that, ha what happens when we put it in here? One, and this negative one becomes a one, so that's also true. So we have a diamond here. And the shape doesn't seem very important, like who cares, one is a diamond, one is a circle. But it turns out when we're doing our regressions, trying to find our regression coefficients, which happen to be betas, uh, really it makes a big difference whether or not a solution is pushed towards one of these extremes, or whether it's pushed towards uh, kind of the middle area here in the case of a circle. So uh, that's just kind of how that works. And um, the L2 norm, L1 norm, it doesn't matter how many dimensions you have. If you have some vector, uh, let's say, let's do this in a color, let's just do it in black. If you have some beta vector and it's just some arbitrary amount, it's beta naught, beta 1, all the way to beta n, then the L2 norm is simply going to be radical beta naught squared plus dot 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 plus beta n squared. You know, you just take as many squared, take the square root. And the L1 norm is going to be simply beta naught absolute value plus beta 1 absolute value plus all the way to uh, beta n absolute value. Just you generalize it. So hopefully that helps. Um, it, this is mostly for the purposes of the regression videos.